If you're thinking about starting up a personal training business or indeed looking for ways to grow your personal training business, then this episode of Fix Your Business is well worth watching. Welcome back everybody, it's the next episode of Fix Your Business. I'm your host Robin Waits, the Fearless Business Coach and today we're going to be learning about how to grow a personal training uh, stroke fitness business. Our guest today is Paul Greaves. Welcome to the show Paul. Good afternoon, thank you. So uh, Paul, just give everybody a quick sort of 30 second intro um, to your business. You're the founder of Edge PT, so what does Edge PT do? It's mainly sort of one-to-one personal sessions um, I, I, I do a little bit of, sort of small group and online classes and things as well um, but then I work both mobile and from commercial gym cool excellent so this session is gonna be fairly fast-paced today uh, Paul so are you ready yeah excellent um, we had a quick chat sort of offline. So, um, you know, started to get a feeling for what sort of challenges your, your business is facing. Obviously, you know, there has been a global crisis happening, but you've managed to kind of weather the storm by the sounds of it. But one of your um, personal goals for your business is to pretty much double your turnover from 1600 a month up to uh, somewhere approaching 3k a month. Why 3k a month? Why is that important to you? That's just kind of the figure that I had in my head in terms of it pays the bills with disposable income longer term as well um, I mean I'm only in rented at the minute so a long term goal is to sort of buy a house and get a mortgage campaign as much in rent as well as we pay in the mortgage for it, which is quite annoying <laughs> cool I mean I think one of the things I asked you before as well is why 3k and would you like more and I think the obvious answer was yes I'd always like more but 3k is a really interesting number because it's the answer that which most people put down they normally put down sort of two and a half k to 4k uh, as a brought in 3k being sort of a good average and actually one of the reasons why 3k is um, quite common is because it's thanks to the industrial revolution and the general kind of like it's it actually equates to roughly a national average wage just a little bit more in the UK um, so for some reason because um, of the way that we've kind of been taught to go through our educational system our parents putting the onus on us to kind of get our GCSEs A levels and go to university and get a proper job most people put that that down because that's all they've been used to in their upbringing and in their working life now I know that you've obviously you've got a couple of businesses running um, you set up the personal training business more recently having worked for I think it's pure gym wasn't it and and you're now sort of doing quite a lot more one-to-one -one work so I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to you we've got an opportunity now to um, increase 3k where would you like to get to ultimately ultimately probably around five would be nice uh, talk to me about kind of the um, the programs that you're selling at the moment you mentioned you've got an online program you've also got some one-to-one -one clients so talk to me about some of the numbers which you're kind of pulling through the business at the moment well when the lockdown sort of happened myself and two other PTs um, we collaborated into because we all work from a pure gym so we were used to delivering classes in big commercial one-to-one -one, etc and obviously that essentially was just stopped dead so we had to create some sort of revenue stream and we have put together the gym from home we've called it and it's effectively zoom sessions on a monthly basis and we're delivering sort of 24 classes live per week and on a membership delivered between our, the three it was in different things like circuits boot camp that type of thing half hour sort of hit sessions and that's something that we're looking to scale and keep going long term as like a hybrid when we're allowed to go back more into sort of the gyms and one-to-ones Cool. I'm just going to share my screen a second. So I want to go through the numbers in a little bit more detail. So at the moment, you've got that online platform, which you're sharing between two other PTs, which is it's yeah. great because it gives you a bit of extra, it gives you a bit of backup for a start to have a team around you. It means it gives a bit, a bit of extra variety from your, for your clients as well on the program. Yeah. Um, but obviously at the moment, you're dividing that money, sort of splitting that money three ways. Cool. So we'll talk about the new pricing. Obviously, we, we did discuss the, the old price, the current pricing, but your new pricing, you're looking at introducing a £30 a month package and a £70 a month package, aren't you? Um, so, and that was going to be for uh, sort of a fixed number of sessions, which you said was uh, 15 sessions. And then the £70 a month was going to be unlimited. Now, I, I, 15 sessions is, um, if you work it out, I mean, over the, over the average month, that's pretty much one every other day. So that's still fairly intensive. Have you got an idea from your existing clients how many people would go on to each one of those two packages? Well, the, the original members that we have, um, we did on, on just a unlimited. And because of the situation, a lot of people have taken advantage of that, I think, because they've been from home. Yeah. And now we've noticed a drop-off in numbers from people starting to sort of transition back to work and things. 
So we've actually shifted our timetable a little bit. So we used to do later starts. We used to do like half seven in the morning. We've now pulled that back to 6.15 for the nearly doors one so that people are still able to do it before work. Um, it's hard to say in terms of if 15 would be too much for people or they would still want the unlimited. I well, I see, I actually think, I think there is a, a definitely a demand for the unlimited, but I think you've got bandwidth to just tweak those prices slightly because think about it this way. So 15 sessions at £30 is £2 a session. I mean, that, that feels immediately to me to be way too cheap per session. You'd never be able to go down to a gym for two quid a session. I know that probably when you've got the big sort of gyms where you can kind of go in and out at, at your leisure and things like that, but you're actually providing a really highly valuable service here in terms of personal, it is personal training, it's group sessions where people are going to get enormous value and there'll be an element of like feedback, which you don't always get from just going down the gym. But even at £2 a session, it's that's still way too cheap. So I mean, even if you, um, for example, if you reduce that down to 10 sessions, it means that, you know, now the price increases from £2 a session up to £3 a session, which is 50% yeah. more revenue per session. If you think about it, that's a big chunk of change. And actually, when you're talking about, I talk a lot about price increases. Now, a lot of people, when you, they immediately think, well, a 50% price increase means I have to sell 50% fewer of the same thing. Actually, that's not true because by the time you take out overheads and expenses and things like that, a 50% price increase could actually mean you could sell 75% or even more fewer of the same thing. You could have far fewer clients and make more money out of it. So that's just something to play around with. And then obviously, if you drop that down to five, just five sessions, you know, now all of a sudden we're up to, wow, we're up to six pound a session here. We've, we've trebled the amount of money we're making per session. And I, I mean, that's once a week. I mean, you could do it. I'd probably maybe go for something like eight, you know, two sessions a week. And anybody who wants nine or more sessions, they go into your unlimited plan and it's double the price. Now, there's, there's economies of scale there, which don't quite work out because then if you, if you only then had nine sessions at £70 a month, well, you're paying £6 a session. It, it kind of doesn't quite work out. So you've still got a bit of finagling to do to get the numbers to add up. But at least you can already start to see the momentum that it would create by having far fewer sessions per, for that basic package. And also, it's about you know, making sure that when you recommend those packages to somebody, don't let, allow them to self-select. If you allow them to self-select out of those two packages, what do you think is going to happen? Pound. I'll have the cheaper one, please, because that's just what we do in Britain. Uh, British people love a deal. They'll just go for the cheapest one. But actually, each of those individuals will have their own goals. So what you need to do is identify what their goals are and make sure that the package is aligned with them. If they want to go off and do an Ironman, probably your basic package isn't going to cut it. Yeah. You know, they're, going to need, they're going to need to work much more intensively and have more interaction with you. Granted, they may even need to then step up to your you know, your one-to-one -one program, um, but, but they need the unlimited package, and you've got to hold them to account to make sure they make best use of it in order to achieve their goals. If it's somebody who's just a bit, hey, I just want to do a bit of CV work and just need a bit of somebody's help to make me do it, and... I've got kids and family and busy work and I can only really do a couple of sessions a week. Fine. Okay. The package we'd recommend for you is our basic package. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So I noticed in your, in your challenges, you, one of the things you put was around sort of the sales side of things and, and um, mm -hmm. being able to articulate your, your value and better, like be able to sell more easily to people. So I don't know if you noticed the language, which I used there, which was, so each client who comes through your business, you kind of need to do a bit of an assessment with them and a bit of a consultation with them in order to understand their goals. But then once you've got that information, it's like a diagnostic, mm -hmm. you'd say, Great. Having looked at your assessment form and what your goals are and what we've discussed during the consultation, the package I'd recommend for you is our unlimited package. And these are the reasons why. And then I come back and I go, oh, God, it's a bit expensive and all the usual kind of bullshit stuff that people say. But you say, no, no, your goal was to go out and do an Ironman. Like the basic package just won't cut it. It just won't get you to your goal. If you want to achieve your goal, you're actually going to have to go unlimited. And potentially once I've got to grips with your ability, we may even have to discuss one-to-one, -one, which is even more expensive. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to kind of focus on then is the one-to-one -one side of things, because at the moment you're charging that out at £40 an hour. It's, yeah, between 45 and 50 minutes. Five okay, minutes. so 45 to 50 minutes, okay. And how many clients have you got doing the one-to-one -one side of things at the moment? uh about eight at the minute okay and how much on average they spend with them? 
Say again? About eight sessions a week between the clients. I've got one client that does three sessions a week and then... So, uh, it says 320. So, you're, you're doing about £1,300 a month out of one-to-one. Mm-hmm. And then I'm guessing the rest of the 300 income you're currently getting is from the group program, the online, online version of it. Okay. Um, this is probably just as a, a little bit of a reality check. So if you want to get to, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to focus on the online program. I'm just going to come back to that a second. So if we were to focus on your 5k goal and you will have seen people do varying degrees of this before. So uh, to get to 5k, well, that's one client at 5,000. It's 10 clients at 500 uh, or it's a hundred clients uh, at 50 for example. Okay. So you can see your online program is kind of round about here, but that's split three ways for the, for the online. So actually it's not 5k it's um, we can add a one in front of all of those. So actually your business needs to make 15 grand a month in order for you to get paid five if it was just the on the online version of it so it means that or actually that's 300 clients at 50 pounds a month does that make sense so you're at 60 you've got a 5x the number of clients you've got in that group currently mm-hmm. is that feasible i think it's a long-term transition i don't think it'd be something that would happen overnight when you had a chat with your two buddies either down the pub or in the gym when you set this up, did you, did you have a specific number of clients in mind when you were like, right, in order to get this, make this thing successful, we need to get X number of clients. Did you set that goal out? Not a, as such. We kind of muted around a couple of hundred. It'd be a nice sideline because we were continuing the one-to-one on side. And that's averaging out at about 50 a month. We were talking about sort of, you got 30, 30 pound a month for the basic package, 70 for the unlimited. So it averages out yeah. at about 50. So it's kind of actually, we're, we're just about there where it starts to get interesting though is um and this is this is kind of a basic sales funnel which i'm going to show you there are three numbers which i operate on and i, I wear them on my wrist everywhere i go 70 10 to, and i didn't make these numbers up they came from, from google's zero moments of truth document so it's a white paper they did about how how much effort do you have to put in in order to get clients spat out at the bottom basically and that they created this document with a gazillion bits of data which they've got for service-based businesses which your pt business obviously is so how it works is we um put some content out now we don't know how much that is we just shove some content out and off the back of that um it starts a few conversations so could be people find out about your gym or your PT business online, offline, maybe they get a referral or something like that. And so they'll message you and say, Hey Paul, sounds really great. I'd like to lose some weight. How much does it cost? Um, how often do you give them a price? I'm usually quite transparent and I do give them a price. Good. Okay. I want you to, I call it the dirge of Facebook, right? And people are kind of window shopping. How much does it cost to lose some weight, Paul? And, and then we automatically, we, we're kind of like, we're hooked into um, sending them a price back. We wait and see whether they come back to an, us or not. And often they'll go, oh gosh, that's expensive. So I'm just going to tell you a little, little story. And you may have heard me sort of tell this before. It's called the bleeding net situation, okay? So you're no longer a PT, Paul. You ne- you're now an A&E doctor, right? Somebody comes running into your A&E with a bleeding neck, normally what you would do is you would have, you'd be like, so you'd see blood spurting out, making a mess of your A&E, and you'd be like, right, need to get the crash team in, come on nurses, get him on the bed, let's yeah, bundle him up to the operating theatre, on our way up, we'll do the assessment, see how much blood he's lost, work out how much, how, what we've got to do, let's get on the phone to the anaesthetist, you know, so, so we have a process for it all. Today, it's slightly different though. Today, this person's just come in and, you know, they've just messaged us and just said, got a bleeding neck, uh, what do we need to do to fix it? How much is it going to cost to fix it? Right? So they've just walked into your A&E. They've had a quick look around and gone, ah, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit busy and a bit dirty and I don't really like the curtains and this doctor, I don't really like the look of him. So I'm just going to go back out and find another A&E. Needless to say, they go back out and they bleed to death on the street. So when you do that, you give them the price immediately. What's happening is you're giving a price to somebody who is totally uneducated. They've come to you with a bleeding neck. They've said, I need to lose some weight. And you've gone... This is how we're going to fix you and it costs X. In fact, you haven't even said this is how we're going to fix you. You've just gone, this, it's going to cost you this much. And you've then allowed them to make an uneducated decision. Okay. So it's actually much better if you say something along the lines of when somebody sends a message like that, listen, I can obviously give you a cost for it, but I know nothing about you. 
I don't know whether you're doing any training at the moment. I don't know whether, like, what your goals are. I don't know even know whether it's a good fit or not. So before we get to price, it's much better if actually we, we hop onto a call. I could do a mini assessment and consultation with you and we can work out whether it's a good fit. At that point, I can tell you about our packages or make a recommendation as to if we're not right for you, where, you know, what route you should go down. So you're starting them off on this sort of educational journey, basically. So when we look at this, it's that process of moving people from that piece of content where they like, comment or share then you start them off on a conversation, and, but we want to proactively move them into a consultation. Okay, so that's where you get to go through that, give them a bit of education, you get to find out a lot more about them. You get to assess and you see, oh, actually, it's just a nick. It's a bit, it looks worse than it is. Oh, we can just go, do a quick, you know, bit of local anaesthetic, stitch you up, plaster it, off you go. Or actually, no, it's really serious. We need to get, you know, send you off to a specialist over in Celio. You can only do that if you, if you book them onto a consultation. Super important. And then once you've gone through that process, obviously, you make the recommendations to which package they have. So you get the conversion. Over a while, you'll also build up that bank of law clients, which you've already got. Uh, and they obviously do sort of word of mouth referrals. They skip the first two steps. So word of mouth referrals. They're, they're easier to sell to because they've, you know, Lauren has said to Cheryl, I'm getting great results in this program. It'd be perfect for you go and sign up, you know, have a quick chat with Paul and get signed up. What we're going to do though, and this is where it will get interesting is because we've now got to multiply these numbers up. So we've got to have 300 clients at 50 quid a month, which means you've got to run 1,500 consultations. But we've definitively got to do 1,500 consultations in order to get 300 people booked onto your monthly membership. Now, it's not beyond the realms of possibility, but 1,500 sales consultations, if you do the maths on that, that's about 30 a week. Now, split between the three of you, 10 each, you could do it. You could do it. If you wanted to get to 15K a month income, you know, with yeah. 300 clients, you could do that in 12 months quite easily. And actually at that point, you've got a near 200, 200K a year business between the three of you, which is fantastic. You know, yeah. nice recurring revenue. It's all online. You, don't, you can pick and choose your one-to-ones. You, you can work whatever hours you want to work. It's much more flexible. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Um, are those numbers a bit surprising though? I suppose it's drilling it back into how many touch points you need beforehand to get yeah. that conversion that's the, the you don't realize it is that sort of like you say putting a piece of content out then has to reach x amount of people to then start that conversation it's that transition all the way down the funnel yeah and but most people get hung up on the sales how much money are we bringing in so yeah. those are called they're what we call lag indicators i'm not going to go into that too much but actually the, the more important metrics that we want to get you guys focused on is the lead indicators what it means is that, for example, if your goal was to, um, I don't know, get what, so what's 300 divided by uh, 12, 25. So if you want to get 25 new clients a month, that's pretty much one a day. Mm -hmm. If you get half, or if you get to the end of the month and you've only got 10, say, there's nothing you can do to influence that up or down. But if you actually get halfway through the month, uh, so let's say you get halfway through the month and you've only done 30 consultations between the three of you, you've got two choices. One, you can go, oh, well, we're going to fall short of our goals, but we don't really care because we've got loads of clients. We're happy with that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Or two, you've got the opportunity, the option to double down and just, you know, how can we, the, it's a different question. Not, oh, we haven't got enough clients. How do we get more clients? How do we get more consultations booked? Because naturally, if we book the consultations, it's going to lead to clients. Next thing, and this is really important, okay? So what would you say your conversion rate is at the moment? On the online? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say because I mean, we haven't really, other than the initial setup, we didn't push it from the, after the first month or two. We kind of got to a level and just stagnated a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's something we're now working on is to, we're driving some leads through, through Facebook ads and bits and pieces. Right. So we're, we're running a seven day trial and then probably assess the numbers from that. A uh, seven day trial, that, I mean, that's a cracking way to kind of get people through the door just to try it out and see whether it's a good fit. So, oh, that's, that's fantastic. Because actually that, that actually kind of makes that, that process between the conversations, consultations that much easier because it's kind of like fairly friction. It's not going to cost you anything, you know, yeah. in you go. Got to make sure you do still book them on for the consultation though so you have that sales opportunity. You can't just passively expect them to, to know to start paying and to book in. They don't know what the next steps are going to be. So make sure you have, a, you've probably got a process for it already, but if you haven't, make sure you've got a process for 
proactively subscribing them basically to the paid. Most people, when I ask this question, they're like, oh, if I get in front of people, my conversion rate's really high. So they'll say something like 80 to 90%. And actually, they, it creates this false belief that they're a good salesperson. Mm -hmm. And if I said, double your prices and keep 80 to 90% conversion rate, immediately they go, oh, well, no, Robin, that's just dumb. I couldn't do that. You, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, no, it's because you're not a good salesperson. You can't retain that, that level of a conversion rate, okay? And actually, for a service-based business, Google say that a good conversion rate is somewhere between one in five and one in three. So if you're converting more than 33 and a third percent, that normally is a good indication that your prices are still too cheap. So, and obviously that's, that's bridging that gap between here. So if you start to measure that and, it, and the numbers are too high, you can probably increment your prices mm -hmm. and actually you end up, you can have fewer clients and still make more money. Yeah. Yep. So you could end up with 150 clients and still make 50, 1500 quid cause a month, uh, sorry, 15 grand a month. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know, and it's much easier to manage hundred clients than 300 clients. Yeah. You know, or 150 clients and 300 clients. It's, it, you know, because you get some dickheads in there who just want a ton of support and waste a load of your time, you know, and there'll be other people who just get tremendous value out of what you're giving them and don't take up extra support time, for example. So yeah. the fewer people there are, the less chance there is for, you know, sort of what I call time wasters, basically, tire kick because you just don't get it. So re really, I guess my point is, I'd take these numbers and obviously, you know, take these numbers back to your, your team now, your two other guys and just say, Hey guys, look, I've done this session with Robin. What do you think of these? Is, is this on track with what we want to achieve? How can we increase these numbers? How can we book more consultations? Uh, what have we got to do to grow this thing? Obviously you can increase your prices. That will get you to your goal quicker. You will get more no's. You know, a big thing for service, well, for people in general is fear of rejection. We don't like people saying no to us. But to go from 70, 10 to two, for every two yeses, we're actually getting 68 no's or 68 no, no's not now. So there's this massive inherent amount of failure built into business. So if your assessment qualification process is good, you shouldn't be afraid to be turning people away in their droves to get those really brilliant like clients that just love the value and love the things which you do and they get the culture and the mission and values for the, you know, values of the business, the vision for the business. Now we're going to actually push the one, the, the online stuff to one side for the second. And it, it now just for argument's sake, imagine your business is just one-to-one. -one, okay. You're currently charging 40 pounds an hour. Let's say just to make the numbers easy for myself, you wanted to get to 4k a month from one-to-one. -one, okay. Yeah. That is, a hundred one-to-one sessions a month. That feels like a lot of work. Plus you've also got to do the sales side of it and the admin, the marketing and the blah, the blah, the blah. That, you know, most people typically work, I don't know, 40 hour weeks. So that's typically 160 hours a month. So you're already at two thirds of your capacity just to get to 4K. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know about you, but <laughs> I mean, you could argue that you could raise your PT prices to £80 a session. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's doubling my prices. That's a massive increase. All my clients be like, no shit, Paul's taking the piss. That's way too expensive. Can't possibly afford that. Okay. How many, se they, you said that they typically have one session a week, two sessions a week. How many sessions? Probably two a week. Two a week. Okay. Um, why do they come to those sessions? I've always said, I think personal training works in the best way because it's accountability. So it is that guidance, the turn up, it's an appointment in the diary, they have to do the work because I'm either knocking on the door or they're meeting me at the gym, however okay. it works. Great. But why do they come to you? To achieve a specific goal, I suppose, so cool. to losing weight or... Yeah. Cool. So talk about those specific goals then. The traditional, the standard is sort of generally wanting to lose weight, feel healthier. I tend to be, I think, tend, tend to attract sort of middle-aged female, probably gained a bit of weight, had kids, feeling a bit crap about themselves really. I suppose that's the, the yeah. want to do something for them after they've had their children and feel what's, better. What's your success rate? Uh, pretty high. I mean, I've had some really good sort of success stories from women that are wanting scared to walk into a gym to going off on the run and three, four times a week, not even thinking about it. Okay. So here, here's something which I think will probably change your 
the way you might look at how you're pricing those sessions. I, I'm of the firm of opinion that um, charging by the hour is actually fundamentally unethical. Mm -hmm. okay, and I'll explain why. So uh, I used to run a web design business sort of, you know, so I'm actually going to use that as an analogy as opposed to the PT business, just so just to depersonalize it slightly, but it's still relevant. Um, imagine, imagine we've got two web designers that somebody's choosing between. Okay. So you're, you're in, let's say Paul, you're in the market for a website. Right. And I'm going to um, we've we've done the back and forth and I've given you a quote and it's for 20 hours at 50 pounds an hour. OK, we've agreed it. We're going to go ahead. What I didn't tell you, though, Paul, was that I've only been building websites for about six months. I'm not particularly good. The websites I build don't typically get found in Google. They're probably unlikely to get you leads. It won't be it won't look as good as, you know, some of the others. But I'll give it a good go. And actually what happens is I come back to you in three months time and deliver you a half assed website and say, here you go, Paul. And I'm really excited and enthusiastic. And you go, ah, oh, but there's this other thing and this other thing that I wanted on there. And by the way, you haven't put my logo. It's not the colors. Aren't quite... Oh, oh, right. Okay. But I'm really sorry, Paul, but we've used up your, your 20 hours that I quoted you. So I reckon those changes will take another 10 hours and, and you've got to pay for those. Is that okay? Hmm. Mm, yeah. It's a bit, ah, fuck, really? Um, so it's a bit frustrating. Now, most people are ethical, upstanding human beings. They wouldn't just jack, jack an extra 10 hours onto it and charge the client. Most of them would just take it on their back. And, but now there's tension, there's frustration on your part, it's frustration on the designer's part. It's not a very happy relationship, okay? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we've got Dave. Now, Dave has been designing websites for 20 plus years. He's just not particularly business savvy. He's never had a business coach. He doesn't really kind of understand it. So he comes and he gives you a quote. And he's got, there's two choices now for Dave. We've got Dave Mark 1 and we've got Dave Mark 2. So Dave Mark 1 says, well, I'll do it in an hourly rate. It's, it's 50 pounds an hour and I'll just charge you however many hours it takes. And Paul goes, yeah, okay, I didn't, I'm not sure about that, but it sounds okay. Now, because Dave's really good, he gets it done in 10 hours. So he's only going to make like, you know, a grand out of this as opposed to two grand that the other guy's going to make out of it. Sorry, 500 quid as opposed to the grand that this guy's going to make out of it. So he makes half the money, but his websites are better because he's been doing it for 20 years. You know, you get found in Google, you get five to 10 good leads a week and you're flying. Like you make a massive return on investment out of it. So Dave's much better, yet he gets paid less than the guy who's more less experienced than him. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Whereas Dave Mark II now, who's had a bit of coaching, he comes back and he says, well, actually, Paul, I can do all of that for you, but I can get you your five to 10 leads a week. You will get found in Google. It'll look amazing because I've got 20 years design experience, but it'll cost you two and a half grand. Okay. So it's two and a half times what the original website would cost. And you're a bit like, oh, I'm not sure about that. But actually what Dave can do is he can turn around and say, listen, I'm confident in my work. If you don't get those five to 10 leads a week within the first three months of it going online, I'll refund you because it's not worth my reputation to put shoddy work out there. I want you to refer me. And the reason I get referrals is because my clients get leads. Now, actually, I don't know about you, but I'd be like, well, the thousand pound like website guy isn't giving me those guarantees. The two and a half thousand guy, pound guy is more expensive. That's a little bit more painful, but he's giving me those guarantees. Which one do you have more confidence in? The guy that's guaranteeing the leads. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the key thing is he's, he's not charging. Dave Mark II is charging for a package. He's not charging for an, an hourly rate. If Dave does it and it doesn't work, we've got a couple of choices. We hit the refund key or Dave keeps on working until he makes it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, Dave's an ethical, upstanding human being. He'll do everything he possibly can. He's got skin in the game. He'll make it work. Okay. Cool. Um, because it, also he's experienced. So for your one-to-one -one work, you shouldn't be selling sessions. You should be selling the result. Mm -hmm. Okay, which you kind of are at the moment, but you're, you're, because it's a bit easier to, to it's, it's less painful to give somebody a session at 40 pounds than it is to charge them 1500 quid for a, a, a transformation product. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so imagine this, right? Imagine the next 10 people that come in for a consultation with you for one to one, right? They want to lose some weight and you say, my results are 100% guaranteed. Now we cannot guarantee that you will lose X number of kilos or X number of stones. Okay. Because you're a human being and human beings are, you know, unpredictable physiologically, mentally, and everything else. Mm -hmm. However, one of the things which I do guarantee is perceived value. So 
if you come in and even if we don't achieve the goals, but you feel like you've got everything you need to, you got, we've equipped you. We almost got to losing, you know, 10 kilos, but not quite, but you're, but perceived wise, you're like, do you know what, Paul, you slam dunked it. Even though we got to eight kilos, we didn't quite get to 10. I love the process. I've got everything I need nutritionally wise. I've got my plans now. I've got the accountability. You know, I, I'm confident I can leave it. We're happy. You know, or like, listen, how about I did say we could do this in three months. We didn't quite get there. How about I give you a bonus month so we can share those last two kilograms so that I give you what I promised you in the first place and you pay me no extra. It's 1500 quid for the change, the result and the outcome. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what, have you got any questions for me at this point about that? No, it's, it's probably just a, a block in my own sales ability of how I would sell that because like you say the first question everyone asks is price you tell them the price and it's oh, so yeah. they'll go that. oh it's expensive and that's when you've got to start to get into sales objections now i i'm not i don't have time unfortunately to kind of maybe we need to do a second episode where we go through those sales objections but first you've got the guarantee so that will deflect a bit of that oh gosh I, you know, it gives people confidence. The second thing you can do is, well, actually, you know, I know that a lot of people don't have 1500 pounds stuff down the back of the sofa. So how about we do it this way? You know, let's, let's, I can take a deposit and we can put the rest on an installment plan to yeah. suit you. But what you're paying for is a three month, you know, transformation program. Mm -hmm. Now, the other benefit of that is, so rather than your 40 pound sessions just going on and on and on, and maybe that's mm -hmm. not the ethical way to do it because you, you know, it's, it's now it's within your interest to see those 40 pound an hour, 40 pound session build up. Actually now it's, it's, you've got skin in the game to get that result in three months and move the client out the door because they got the result or yeah. keep them as a, an ongoing client. Yeah. Um, you know, and now all of a sudden rather than 300 pound a month for client for two sessions a week, you're actually making 500 pound a month per client. Or you say, well, it's a three month program, but actually I'm a nice guy. You can pay for it over six months. How does that sound? Plus also, if they ask for loads of niggly extra support and things like that, you're not going to be worried about the fact that it's not per session, they're paying for results. So actually, I can give them a bit of extra time if I need to. Mm -hmm. you know, so you can actually get a better result. The other thing as well, because it's a package, if you start, if, if you hit that one in five to one in three magic golden ratio of conversions, and all of a sudden you start converting loads of people because you're really fucking good, you can go, well, actually, I'm going to put my prices up and now my transformation program is 1800 quid or it's two and a half K or it's five K or you can do what my mate Lazo Freeman does. So he started out as a jobbing personal. Have you heard of Lazo? Do you know him? Wow. Yeah. So he started out as a jobbing PT, 20, 20 pound an hour working 90 hour weeks and all this sort of stuff as most PTs do. He developed over, over about six or seven years, he developed this transformational product for high net worth individuals who travel the globe, probably not so much anymore because of the crisis, but um, he has 10 clients that pay him $100,000 a year. He's a personal trainer if you break it down, but actually because his program is concierge, if a client is in Doha and they want his help, he'll fly out to Doha for a week, break them down, build them up physically and mentally, and then fly on to his next client. And that's all included as part of the package. Cool. Yeah. Ten, yeah. He just needs 10 clients. So, and that's because he, he understands his value. He has a really tight niche. He's, he started off at 30 and gradually he went through those, you know, the, the levels of initiative. So he packaged it up. So it was a 1500 pound program. And then, then he got, there was high demand for it because he positioned himself as a key person in his in industry. And then he was able to sell it at two and a half K, five K, 10 K, 50 K, fuck it, a hundred K. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you've got a, you may need somebody's help, somebody like me to help you go through all of the, there's a lot of steps to go through in terms of that productization piece. Like it, and, I, I can guarantee you, if you went and pitched 10 transformation products over the next week to prospective clients, you will sell two. I can guarantee clients like buses are unpredictable. So the first eight will say no, it will be the last two that will say yes. Okay. By the first three, you'll be starting to have a wobble and wonder whether I know what I'm actually talking about. Okay. You'll start to lose confidence because all of a sudden now we've got to pay our rent. We've got to put food on the table. I'm not getting the sales that I was getting when I was at 40 quid an hour and you start to have those wobbles in confidence. The process of, of scaling up from hourly rate, value-based exchange up to transformational exchange is normally about four to six weeks. 
Mm -hmm. So it'll take you four to six weeks to speak to 10 to 20 prospective clients and get two to four clients booked onto that 1500 pound transformational product. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, all of a sudden, like you sell one of those packages, you've just equaled your monthly turnover. Would you be willing to just try it and wait four weeks if that's what it takes to book one extra client at 1500 quid? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You may have a, a, like a downsell product, which is if, you know, actually the 1500 pound program is way too intensive. Actually, I've got a weekly program rather than, t you know, twice a week. I've got a weekly program, which is uh, 900 pounds. Yeah. Same price as what you were doing before 300 pound a month but half the input and energy that you've got to put into it. And it might be that actually that session is rather than being 45 minutes, we'll maybe make the session a bit longer, give them more education. There's more stuff to go and work on themselves. So it's knowledge transfer. So then they'll get better results that way. Do you see? Yes. You can now, now you've got a silver and a gold package. You could have a platinum package, which is the Ironman package, which is like 3K to get you from, you know, couch to Ironman in three months. I don't know if that's feasible, but you know what I mean? So now we've got yes. tiered products. And all you've got to do is find the right client to fit into the right product. Yeah, Job perfect. done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose I think it is, it, you just kind of follow the lead of everybody does it in a session price or a block of four, eight, 12 sessions. And you, you charge that, that rate. And I've had it before of people where it, it's natural to give a discount for the more sessions. But I can't remember it was someone who, who was, said, well, why are you charging them? less when they're going to get a better result yeah 100 percent. and I'll, I'll just let you in on a, a little secret okay so you you've alluded to competition-based prices pricing so um we've got this is paul you've got dave over here and you're looking at dave to see how much he's charging because it's on his website and he's so paul's a i'm well let's let's imagine actually you haven't you know you just started out and you're just kind of doing a bit of research so you look at dave and dave's charging i don't know 25 pound an hour uh, Dave actually happened to look at, um, I don't know, Roger and, um, there's Roger, uh, Roger's a uh, little bit more expensive. He's, um, 50 pound an hour. And Dave thought that the right thing to do was to cut, you know, slash Roger's pricing in order to get clients through his business. Uh, Roger was looking at, I don't know, Sharon, uh, and Sharon was charging 15 pound an hour. And then Sharon's looking back at Paul to see how much Paul is charging, right? Who actually set the prices here? No. And what, and what was their science behind like how they chose their prices? Yeah. They fucking made it up. So what tends to happen is when we look at the competition, we, uh, it's the right thing to do, by the way. I, there's nothing, I don't, I never not go out and look and see what the competition are doing. The mistake is assuming that the competition are actually right. Because yeah. All Sharon's fucking doing is bitching and moaning that she's not making enough money. And actually most of her sessions are at a loss because she's having to pay the gym five pound for every hour that she's there teaching her clients. She's making tenner an hour. By the time she takes off ta tax and expense and everything else, she's earning less than national minim you know, minimum wage. Yes. And you've got Dave, but Dave's actually got his own unit. So Dave's actually paying him really high rent, but he undercut Roger, who actually, Roger's got it nailed because he goes off and uses national trust fields. So he's got no overheads whatsoever. He's creaming it. Right? So, so we assume that everybody is right when actually we're not paying attention to their personal circumstances. We're not paying attention to what, um, what stats. So when, when I was going through this, like we've worked out some numbers that economically are going to make your business stack up. So your prices are relevant to you and your business. When people are looking at the competition, that, those prices are relevant to their business. It's wrong to assume that they've got it right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, so like I said, you can look at them. It's, it's always worthwhile looking at the competition. I, I don't know about you, but I would always rather be sort of up at the more expensive end of the market because one of the first things that people say to me, for, I mean, I'm not the most expensive in my market. There are people charging six figures for some of the work, which I do, um, you know, but when I tell people, especially local small businesses, my prices, the first thing, well, one of the first things they typically say is, it's normally one of two things, gosh, that's expensive, or you must be good. Because we assume that if something's a bit more expensive, it must be better. And I, I'm a big fan of pay cheap, pay twice. Yeah. Like that, that runs, it's so true with everything that you do. You know, we bought a cheap paddling pool for the girls and, and now we're on our third paddling pool. 
Like we might as well have bought the really expensive, really thick one with the, the aluminium frame on it in the first place. Yeah. You know, so. cool. Listen, Paul, we hope there's some really, hopefully there's some valuable insights there that you've got out of this. We're at time already. In fact, we've gone over a little bit, but um, what I'll do is I will, I'll send you the diagram, which I drew up, which has got those stats in it for you and your business partners to kind of um, to, to mull over and obviously give them at, like, hop them into the Facebook group if they want to check out this video before it goes onto YouTube. For everybody else's benefit, hopefully if you've enjoyed this episode of Fix Your Business, uh, make sure you drop any questions you've got into the comments below. If you, you know, a couple of free gifts, I've got um, some pricing frameworks. If you want a copy of my mindset, uh, validate um, and time pricing framework, my MVT pricing framework, just drop MVT or pricing into the comments below and I'll make sure that you get um, uh, access to a copy of that somehow. And if you did want to come onto the Fix Your Business series, you can email me robin at fearless.biz and we'll find a way to get you onto the show and fix some of the uh, inherent issues that you've got within your business and turn it into a six or seven or eight or nine or gazillion figure business, whatever it is that you want to achieve. Uh, Paul, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully that you found that helpful. Yeah, brilliant. thank you. Thank you for your time. Great, thanks.